Hello, I'm going to show you a proof of the Pythagorean theorem based on the idea of similar triangles. I've drawn two triangles here and they're exactly the same. They have the same sides and the same angles. What I'm going to do with this triangle is I'm going to draw a line straight down from here to here and then this line I inscribe is going to be at right angles to this line. So, let me go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm like that. Okay, so this line is at right angles to this surface, so that's a right angle there, and then this is a right angle here. All right, now the distance from here to here I'm going to call x. Now, if the length of this entire side is c, then this distance here is c minus x. So, x, c, this is c minus x. So, I'm going to write that in. c minus x. All right, we'll do that. All right, now... The idea of similar triangles is that if uh, two triangles share two identical angles, then their third angle has to be the same. So, for example, this smaller triangle right here has the angles alpha and the 90 degree angle. And then this triangle right here has the angle alpha and a 90 degree angle and an angle theta. Well, that means that since alpha and a 90 degree angle are shared between these two triangles, that means this angle here has to be theta. So I'm going to inscribe that right here. If you take a look at this other slightly larger triangle right here, it has the angle 90 degrees, just like this one, and it has the angle theta, just like this one. Well, if these two triangles share the angles 90 degrees and theta, and if this angle is alpha, then this angle up here has to be alpha. All right. Now, what I'm going to do to differentiate the three different triangles we see, one, two, and three, the big triangle, I'm going to sort of color things in. So the small triangle, I'm going to color in with the color pink. So let's just fill this up with some pink coloring right here. And then <clears throat> this larger triangle, I'm going to color green. So, All right, so now we have three triangles, the pink one, the green one, and the bigger one. And the bigger one is also this one right here, so we can just see all three. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of place some uh, cutouts on top of the triangle. So this pink triangle right here, I'm going to put a pink triangle on top to represent it. And then... This green triangle here, I'll put a green triangle here to represent it. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these triangles and flip them over and move them to a different location. So I'm just going to take this one, I'm going to move it down here like that. And then I'm going to take this one and move it over here. Just flip it and move it over. All right, now this pink triangle is this pink triangle. This side X on this pink triangle is X right here. So this side X corresponds with that side X. They're the same. And then what else do we have? Um, this side A, the hypotenuse of the pink triangle, the side opposite the 90 degree angle, that's this side right here. So A and then side A 
right there. I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, green triangle. Um, let's see here. This uh, side here, C minus X, that corresponds with this side right here. Okay, so this is C minus X right there. C minus X is opposite the angle alpha. See, angle alpha right here. And then um, side B, the hypotenuse of the green triangle is opposite the 90 degree angle. So opposite the 90 degree angle is side B right here. All right, so side B is opposite the 90 degree angle here. Side B is opposite the 90 degree angle there. All right, well, if you look at these, these two triangles have the same shape. And they should, since they're similar triangles, they share at least two common angles. What that means is that the ratio of sides is proportional between all three of these triangles. So for example, between these two triangles, the ratio of X to A is equal to the ratio of A to C. So let's write that. The ratio of X to A, or X divided by A, is going to be equal to the ratio of A to C. All right, and what we'll do is let's uh, cross multiply and sort of simplify things here. X times C equals A times A, or A squared. All right, and we're going to do the same thing uh, comparing these two triangles. The ratio of this side to this side, C minus X to B, is going to be equal to the ratio of this side to this side, B to C. So let's write that. C minus X to B, or C minus X divided by B, this ratio of sides is going to be equal to the ratio of these two sides here. So that's going to be equal to B divided by C, B to C. Okay, so let's cross multiply and simplify things out. We're going to do um, C times C minus X is going to be equal to B times B, or B squared. All right, C times C is C squared. C times X is equal to CX, or XC, it doesn't matter, so I'm going to write it as XC. So minus X times C, so that's what you get when you multiply C times X, you get X times C equals B squared. All right, we have a minus XC right here, and on this side, we see that XC equals A squared. So in place of XC, I'm just going to substitute A squared, since XC equals A squared. So that's going to give us C squared minus A squared equals B squared. You can probably see where this is heading. I'm going to move A squared over to this side. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I just added A squared to both sides of these, causing this to drop out and A squared to appear here. And we can rewrite this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I just flipped it around. And there it is. Whoops, didn't see it there, sorry. There it is, the Pythagorean theorem. Thanks for watching.